Good morning, everybody, respected chairpersons and ladies and gentlemen. My topic of poster podium is retinoblastoma and retinal pigment epithelium change. Myself and my co-author do not have any financial interest in this uh, oral podium presentation. This is purely an academic one. Well, retinal pigment epithelium is very sensitive layer of the retina and many drugs, particularly the chemotherapy used in systemic therapy of retinoblastoma and other tumor uh, seems to affect the, this retinal pigment epithelium uh, uh, in many of the ways. The aim of the study is to analyze retinal pigment epithelium change in post chemotherapy with retinoblastoma cases. This was a laboratory based study from 2016 to 2021. Most of the eyeball were group E retinoblastoma eye enucleated and eyeballs are sectioned by standard broad left technique. Now these were grossly seen retinal pigment epithelium next day after enucleation uh, in a formalin fixed you know, part of the epithelium was filled up and it was uh, flat preparation in the smaller calots of retinoblastoma was stained with fluorescent stain that we have innovated in the raw specimen. They were documented in the objective of compound microscope Exoscope 40 in Exocam MRC camera compared with hematoxid in eosin stain slide in the permanent section after three days. These are the pictures showing the RP changes with the central RP changes compared with the histopathology in the after three days of enucleation. Now total 51 cases of retinoblastoma seen and post chemotherapy were uh, received diverse 17 cases. Mean age of enucleation was 4.2 years. Endophytic retinoblastoma was the commonest uh, followed by exophytic. Corridor involvement was seen in 47.06% uh, of these 17 cases and uh, optic nerve involvement was seen in five cases. In result, focal and diffuse retinal pigment epithelium change was seen in each case, uh, mm, that is uh, uh, one in each case, and central RP change in all 17 cases, both by flows in, uh, in the uh, 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 gross specimen and HND stain later were showed 100%. Drusens was seen in eight cases, and RP proliferation was seen in three cases, account 17.65%. This is the complete profile of the patient of uh, uh, cases. And here, the retinal pigment epithelium change focal was seen in one, diffuse changes was seen in one, central retinal uh, uh, pigment epithelium atrophy, which was seen in 17 cases, that is accounting 100%, and drusens was seen again in eight cases, and RP proliferation in three. For the staining, both fluorescent stain and hematoxin picked up all the cases in there. So whatever our understanding in retinoblastoma pathology is that ERG changes following a chemotherapy already is established. But the, uh, he, this study showed the evidence of RP changes all these years. Uh, and these were um, uh, proven by uh, the fluorescent stain and confirmed by a, uh, hematoxylin eosin stain. Significant association between post chemotherapy and RP atrophy were seen. To conclude, the study highlights different RP change in post chemotherapy RB uh, cases which ha can have mm, uh, significant clinical implication. These are my selected reference. Thank you for patient hearing. I'd like to acknowledge our kids of, uh, with retinoblastoma, Dr. BBCI Cancer Institute and our pathology lab. Thank you for patient hearing. Um. Good presentation, Dr. Deepankar. I have a question. Um, how does this, uh, basically, how can you correlate this clinically? Like what is the significance? Significant is that, first of all, uh, when you saw it pathologically, now, it was, see, whatever HND section we take, we get a single layer of RP or the other thing. When you try to see the flat preparation retinoblastoma, when you first saw it, we saw such a you know, changes, the central RP atrophy. Then no, 
all these cases were coming and each of the cases we are examining and we saw this pathological central RP atrophy. Then when we compared we are s uh, our slide, we showed a significant observation. Now important thing that apart from this period, all the cases that are coming to the lab, all we are seeing the changes. That is a significant observation. None, in no cases, post chemotherapy, we have not found any other change, that central retinal RP. Now, just observe one finding in retinoblastoma survival patient. Most of the kids only use a spectacle. What is the genesis? Suppose one eye enucleated, other eye there is a refractive error. Just observe this finding. You find that some sort of refractive error happens in the other eye. Probably this is the RP changes. So initially before our studies, no, some ERG studies were made, but it is very difficult to record the ERG in small children. But they have found that some ERG changes happen in the uh, post-chemotherapic eyes. Now this is very significant. Now whatever CEV chemotherapy we are using for retinoblastoma or added carboplatin, is there, there will be a newer chemotherapy which will be a less side effect in the RP. That should be our goal for retinoblastoma treatment. Because you see, and even not only retinoblastoma, the leukemic cases which has enucleated eye. Now, this has also a change. So some chemotherapy, this most of the chemotherapy has a RP changes. And this RP is a very, very sensitive layer. And these get affected by most of the R uh, chemotherapy. Great work, Dr. Das. I had a quick question for you. So uh, did any of these patients receive intravitreal chemotherapy? Yes, that's a very interesting uh, question because some of the uh, cases also re received topotican, malphalan, etc. No, now we have not detailedly compared those studies, but mm -hmm. somehow if you put intravitreal or even a conjunctival uh, malphalan or topotican, they should have some RP changes. But mostly since when you put intravenous chemotherapy, it is basically systemic and RP come fast. It is much more changed than comparative to vitreous and the uh, subconjunctival uh, uh, local chemotherapy agent. Yeah, it will be interesting to look into it because clinically we see a lot yeah. of RP atrophy, especially with intravitreal to topo yeah. sequence. So yeah. you can maybe you can differ uh, look into the differences between intravitreal versus intravenous. Yeah. And for intra, I have seen few cases of intraarterial chemotherapy eyes. Okay, now these have basically vascular occlusion in the intratumoral zone. That is one difference from, from uh, intraarterial from the chemotherapy. Here, RP changes occur, but intraarterial occlusion happens there much more. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, sir.